Let's look at a flexible shaft coupler. This is a flexible shaft coupler. It couples one shaft to another. This particular one has the same bore diameter on this side and this side, meaning that it couples two shafts of the same diameter, but they're available in a wide variety of different sizes. For example, we have half inch here and half inch here in this one, but you might find something that's half inch here and three eighths inch there, or a quarter inch here and five eighths of an inch there. Uh, so you can couple different shaft diameters together. So I'm gonna put this one in. I, I'm not gonna tighten it down. If I wanted to really lock this shaft in place, I would use a, a hex wrench to lock this down. Uh, it just, it provides compression right here. You can see this is, it's a kind of a C shape where it's split fully on this end, but not on this end. So tightening this nut down or this bolt down compresses that C shape around the diameter of your shaft, thereby locking it in place. Okay, so we have our, our shaft together now. Why is a flexible shaft coupler even necessary? Like what, what would, why would you need to, to put this together? I mean, what, what's the value in it? Well, um, let's pretend that, let's pretend that I have a motor that this shaft here is coming out of a motor. And this motor is mounted rigidly to whatever structure it's mounted to. And then I have uh, this, this uh, shaft right here that needs to be coupled to that motor. And this shaft I have going through a couple of ball bearings in this aluminum block so it spins nice and smooth. And I want to couple these two together. Now, if, if I used a rigid shaft coupler right here, what would happen if, I, I'm going to exaggerate here, but let, what, what if, uh, these, this shaft lined up with sh this shaft or, or misaligned with this shaft, maybe because of the position in which that motor is mounted and the relative position that say this block is mounted. What if those two shafts ended up, you know, kind of like, like that, uh, where it, it's, it's not, it's not perfectly aligned, right? It, it's offset by some amount. There is no way that a rigid shaft coupler would allow those to spin. Uh, you would just get binding. The, the motor would try to turn, and because these shafts are, are misaligned, um, it, you, wouldn't get, you wouldn't get motion. In fact, if, if it was really off by that much, you wouldn't even be able to get the, um, you wouldn't be, be able to get the rigid shaft coupler in place. Um, but there's there's almost always going to be some small amount of misalignment when you have two shafts. They're never going to be perfectly concentric with one another. Concentric just means that the axes of those two shafts line up perfectly. Um, <clears throat> there's always going to be some small amount of misalignment. Now, it might only be, you know, five thousandths of an inch or ten thousandths of an inch, or, or maybe it's not lateral misalignment. Maybe it's angular misalignment. You know, maybe it's off by a degree or half a degree or something like that. Now I'm going to exaggerate here what what a flexible shaft coupler will do. So what if uh, this this remember we're pretending this is a motor shaft. What if that was offset by you know several degrees? This is probably three degrees, four degrees offset, something like that. Now you in in reality you'd never run it if it was that far off. It was if it was that far off then something's wrong in your design or the manufacturing was off. But just to illustrate the point, you can see how um, I, I can actually move this and it's not terribly difficult with, uh, you know, three degree, I, I don't know what it is, several degrees of misalignment. And that's what a flex, flexible shaft coupler will do for you. Um, it, it just, it gives you that ability to couple shafts that are not perfectly aligned. Um, one thing that you do have to be careful about is you can get some, in fact, you can probably see it. Yeah. You can see that axial compression there. And in most cases, this is, this is probably fine. But if you do have a case where you cannot tolerate any axial displacement or compression, you know, may, maybe there's a load pushing in this direction and, and you cannot allow the shaft to displace in that direction, then you might not, well, you might not be able to use this type of, of flexible shaft coupler anyway. There are other types out there, uh, but just you know, be be conscious of the fact that 
uh, because you have introduced some flexibility by design with this shaft coupler, um, there there are some other considerations to uh, to to potentially worry about. You know, for example, that that axial compression. And again, a lot of times it's just not going to be a big deal. Doesn't matter, but sometimes it will. So just be aware of it. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.